Go on. Okay, then. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am James Akage Fanboy, and I got a special guest. A woman who needs no introduction but my video, so I say the rules or whatever. Uh, she created your childhood all the way back to some like Dragon Tales, if you remember. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Erin Fitzgerald. She is the she is one of the best damn voice actresses ever. And in this video, I will be asking her a series of a few questions. And a few of her voices too. So without further ado, what why don't we get up to that? Let's get right into it, James. Indeed. Alright, so we're going to start from the top here, going for Aaron. Question number one, what has gotten you into voice acting, and what? And do you have any sort of an inspiration? It was not a thing. When I was younger, I knew when I was like three years old I wanted to be an actor. I was a character actor who a lot of different character vocalizations and accents, but that wasn't something you focused on back in the day, becoming the character. So I did theater, I did on camera, and I was working behind the scenes doing looping for a television show, and one of the other um, actors who was doing the looping said I should get into cartoons. Because the only reason we separate things in acting is to know what contract means, which whether it's an on-camera contract, a television contract, a movie contract, voiceover contract, that's how they're separated from the union. Um, there was never such a thing as voice acting because you don't act with your voice, you act with your whole body. You are either an actor or you're not an actor. Um, so if you think you're just a voice actor, you're not. You're either an actor or you're not an actor. <laughs> so uh, because of just being characters, you're acting behind a camera, on a stage, or behind a microphone. That's pretty much it, really. All right. Uh, All right. Just another acting. All right. All right, that's a good answer. I like it. I like it a lot. It's my answer, so that's the answer I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I like that answer. I like that answer a lot. Anyway, for question number two, out of all the roles you have had a load of fun and enthusiasm doing, which one of them, or in this case, which one is your all-time favorite? Nope, can't pick one. Nope, mean question. Nope, can't pick one. After hundreds and hundreds of characters, you can't pick a favorite. That's mean. Are you That's a mean question. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to decide. Are you sure? It, are you sure it isn't one jacket-wearing high schooler who loves meat? Not my all-time. She she may be the fans' all-time favorite. Like I feel like most people. I think the battle amongst the fans for. My, the best role that they like that I've done is usually between Chie and Noir right now. Those are the ones that the fans talk to me about the most. Uh, but there's still, like, there's hundreds of other characters that fans approach me with. Um, and then there's the characters that I'm madly in love with, but I would never, it's just like having children. You don't pick one child above the other. You love them all equally. I can't say that I love Chie more than Yurl, more than Bo, because I don't. I love them all equally because I love them, and love is love. You can't. It's not a measurement. It's it's a it's a love. Love makes the world go round. Word. All right. Question number three. Any good tips for those wanting to become a voice actor and or actress? Please take acting classes, lots of acting classes, any kind of acting classes, improv classes, singing classes, all of these things um, will help craft you as an actor and will teach you all sorts of ways of performing uh, characters that are believable in the world that they live in. And so acting, 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 acting. Um, you can take classes with people who work in voiceover to get more voiceover specific tips because there's obviously Tips and tricks behind the camera you want to know to, to give a better performance and you, there's tips and tricks on, on stage you want to know to give a better performance for the audience. It's the same type of thing, but you, you need acting 101. Like that is, seems to be the, the one piece that I hear from casting directors and directors that they are having the hardest time with, with this new generation flooding in, is that none of them have any acting training. Not none. 
but many of them don't have acting training and expect to be cast when they uh, are just doing voices. And what I hear, and my also my opinion, doing voices is a party trick. Performing and acting as a character is um, acting. Think classes. And play with your friends, act with each other, perform, perform, perform. That's a good answer because I got a friend who's trying, who's tr who says one day he might become a voice actor, but he has never done right. anything about taking classes. Well, you gotta learn how to act. It's not just doing voices. Now, an now, fourth question: What role would you redo if you could to try to improve it to improve on it? Well. I don't think that there's any role I would redo. There were jobs where they were under, they were squished for time and they, I could only do one take instead of multiple takes. Uh, I wish every job that has a tiny little budget and makes you do one line at a time is kind of horrific and I wish I had more time on those jobs. Um, but for the time that I did have and the, what the, the restraints that I did have, I think I did a great job considering, even though the audience has no idea that you were under those kind of restraints. Um, yeah, once it's done, it's done. I let it go. All right. Now, this question is a sort of me question. And okay. I've been hesitating as if, as if I should want to ask that kind of question. Or not. This is the kind of qu question I've been wanting to ask voice actors or a voice actor or actress a lot of times. How do you feel about those who don't, who say, oh, the, 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 this person's interpretation of the character is, is worse than this, the last person's interpretation? Oh, like. Well, having to do a character that somebody else has already played, I think that's the worst thing to do to an actor, no matter what. Like, like, and a, like a character. A, somebody has already established a character. And then for whatever reason that actor is no longer around and they hire someone else for the character or the job gets sick. There's a thousand reasons why that stuff happens. It's the worst thing for an actor. Um, because first of all, you're never gonna try and be the person that would be redundant and ridiculous and you can't. Again, doing a sound alike is pretty much the same thing as doing impressions, which is a party trick. It's not acting. Um, and no actor likes to, to be a sound alike. We all wanna be creating characters from scratch. Um, and when fans feel that way, that's absolutely within their right because that's more on the production side of things. Like for example, for Chie, the the, the direction that they, they Tracy Rooney was the original Chie, and um, they wanted for Golden, they, they went way too kind of P3 in the darkness and the seriousness with the character for Persona 4, because they kind of, they didn't know Persona 4 was gonna be lighter and funnier than Persona 3 at the time that they did Persona 4, so they went a darker route with Chie, and when they did Golden, they realized they wanted to young her up more and make her a little bit more playful. Tracy Rooney, who was an on-camera actress, um, who wasn't, in, she's not, she was an on-camera actress, and she performs, you know, her character within her, her, her realm, I, whereas I'm a character actor, and they wanted, uh, so they, they, Tracy gave it a shot, it wasn't for, she wasn't a fan of the direction. She, it didn't resonate with her, so she left the role. And um, I did not audition, I was brought in. We matched GA anyway, and the, and the director already knew me. Um, and, uh, but that was the worst, knowing I came in after someone else. And not I never want to insult Tracy Rooney or her performance, which was brilliant. And based on what the production wanted, and fans don't even realize that 90% of the time, what we do is we're told to do. You know, there's writers and producers and directors telling us where they want the placement for the character is, what the performance needs to be like. We are told what to do all the time. We don't get to, you know, create freely. It's not just us creating it. It's a team of people creating each character. We didn't write the story. We didn't design the character. We're not directing the entire pro production. So we don't know who the tone is from all the other characters. That's a whole team of people. So when people are mad at, don't be mad at the actor, be mad at the production because A, it was their choice too, uh, to make the decision that they made to have to recast. 
for at B, the ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, everybody. Let's welcome back. My host, I use screen cancel eyes, so it counts down for 10 minutes only. Anyway, <clears throat> sorry to cut you off in your statement, Aaron. Please continue if you want to. Yeah, um, yeah, so I'm not, I can't be mad at fans for preferring one thing or the other because I'm that way. There are things like when performers I love and they change actors, it drives me crazy. But the love and character performed by a certain actor, new actor comes in, of course, it's going to be different in interpretation. Not just the actor, the director, everybody. It's the new actor. All right. I just like, I don't go out and tell everybody that I factor or like, I don't do that. I think that's ridiculous. I don't know why, but I get the passion of like, why would you do that to me? It's because it does feel like a betrayal when you're a fan. <laughs> All the hours or attention or money you put into something when they recast. So here's the thing. If you're unhappy with the recasting, let the production people know. They need to know because the more you tell them that they, they need another solution up, then they have, and I don't think that they take, um, they still, television, film, whatnot, um, they don't take that the impact of changing an actor on a fan. They just think that we're all replaceable because they tell us that all the time. We're replaceable. We do our work all the time. Um, not all of them, but but the industry as a whole tends to lean towards telling artists that we're replaceable. If you're an artist, you know, any form of art, people try to tell you you're replaceable. You're not. Okay? It's unique. So, yes. Support the people that you love. Follow your favorite actors. Um, support them. Don't worry about the actors who aren't your flavor. If you, you, know, if you prefer chocolate over vanilla, don't go around hating on vanilla. It's just not your flavor. You know what I mean? Focus on all the things that are chocolate. <laughs> and just go with the chocolate. You know, people don't go around and go, I think vanilla is the stupidest flavor ever. Why was it invented? Well, there are some people who like vanilla. What are you going to do? I like, I, I love vanilla milk. <laughs> Beautiful statement, Aaron. Beautiful. Mm. We're going to save the Chie questions for last. Now then, this is the start of your night of work. It's time to bring out the voices. Are you ready? We're going to bring out the one, the only, Genocide Jack. Thank you so much for bringing me on your show, Jake. <laughs> how are you gonna find me how, how are you gonna find me you don't know where i live jack you live in los angeles and anyway anyway Genocide Jack, it is good to have you on here. Oh, we're still going with the. Oh, I thought you were going to change it up with the characters. I'm sorry. No. These are questions for Jack. Okay, go ahead. Have you found your White Knight Tagami yet? Ah. You what? Ah. Is he busy hiding from you? I might know where he is. I saw I saw him somehow sneaking around in the in the uh, in in that Aaron girl's uh, stream. So nextly, have you started going after more victims with them scissors of yours? Uh, where do you, where do you get those extra scissors to unleash those anime attacks you did in Ultra Despair Girls? I mean, yeah, the fucking spirit bomb and shit like that. A ninety nine cent store. 
The 99 cent store. But it, you said in your game that you make your scissors. Do I smell a lie up in here? You're a liar. Oh, that's the one with the big tongue. How much fun do you do you have do you have knowing what you are, Jack? How much fun do you have knowing of knowing about the slashing and the killing, Jack? All right. Who is better, you or Fukawa? Why you? Why you? All right, then. All right, Jack. Well, that's all the time we have for you, Jack. I see Togami over there. Should go after him, then. Any, all right then. All right. A little Genocide Jack was fun. Now we're going to bring in Noir. Okay, just so you know, I am extremely busy every day, so I don't have much time. What is it that I can do for you, Jake? Be quiet, Miss Lonely. What? You can't talk to me like that. I am a goddess. Excuse you. You. And we live in the real world, not some not some video game world. Oh, okay. Question number one. <clears throat> what kind of what other cosplays are you hiding from us, Noir? Please let us know. I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea what uh the cosplay is. You can just ask me another question. But this picture that Neptune and Blanc gave me is very convincing. What's it? What? I mean, that's photoshopped somebody. Photoshopped. That is not even. Really? It looks surprisingly like you. Well, a Sailor Moon outfit. Well, really? On that picture. That's not me. That's not my. That's this. Not me. Really? Because I see. I see. Uh, I say Uni peeping in the background. No, no. It's not me. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not that I I don't dress up as other characters for fun ever because it's not a thing I do at all because I'm completely Ma magical noir. I don't know what you're talking about. Really? That video. This video seems to uh, say something different. I have to go now. I have to go now. I have to go. Goodbye. Really? Wait. Noir, you signed the contract about being here. Please, Noir. Oh, well. And I was going to be bringing in all... I was going to be bringing in all sorts of interesting questions for her. Should have saved that for the end of her interview. <laughs> She's out. I'll bring her back somehow. I got my ways. Anyway, now we got I the the new canonical canon character Choco Chie. You gotta eat less greens. <laughs> Choco Chie, Choco Chie for your face. Choco Choco Chie. I'm a chocobo, and I am chia, and I also like to kick. Wada! <laughs> How do you like your chocobo meat prepared? Crispy. Crispy? That's... Yup. And for those who, who are watching but don't know who Choco Chia is, she, it was, she was a character created in one of uh, Aaron's earlier streams. Then we got a picture drawn because I recommended a picture, and ever since then she became canon. She, yeah, Choco Chie is the thing. Choco Chie is canon. 
I'm, it's an in my brain. Atlas will never recognize her because Square Enix and Atlas will never come together on this. But they are united in my home. Two. Two. One. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. Choco Chie? We were talking about the amazingness of Choco Chie. By the uh, way, by the way, we are in the church of Choco Chie. You should join. Yes. It's pretty good. So Choco Chie, how strong are you when you and the regular Chie are together? We've never been in the same place at the same time. Oh. Hmm. Two different universes. That's true. We'll need to make a crossover. It's like a quantum reality where GA is a chocobo. That is correct. All right, Choco GA, your final question. How do you feel about those who want to eat more of their greens? More of their what? More of their greens. Their greens. They gotta eat less greens. What ne be ne words better said from an amazing Chocobo. Choco Chie, thank yeah. you for your time. Welcome. Now go and go and beat up some go and beat up some uh, some people with your talents. I will eat puppy. Now then the last now and then we're gonna bring in one more character. Behold, the one, the only, Chie Satanaka. Hey guys, you better be watching Kung Fu. Chie, no. Chie, welcome. No. You have the most questions. You have six questions. James? Yes. <laughs> oh, perfect. Question number one. Teddy and Yosuke, Yosuke have teamed up and taken your meat collection and shrine. How are you going to go after them? Don't worry. I know where they live. They've escaped it to the TV, though. Do, do, do you not know who I am? The, great, the greatest person. The greatest person. Huh? All right, that's right. Yeah, that's, I gotta remember, I'm dealing with Chie here. How do you like your filet, mili, filet mignon cooked? Rare. Rare? All oh, the rare. Don't worry, I'll bring you 10 filet mignons. Excellent. Can you cook me some of that delicious food of yours, Chie? The others clearly have no good taste in true Chie cooking. You need to talk to them because uh, my curry is the best curry that has ever been made on the planet. So I feel like they're being a little bit dramatic. It's I could possibly use more meat in it, but I was using the ingredients that they had in their kitchen. Exactly. You ex you're just experimenting. Exactly. And it was a genius experiment. It tasted so good. Nanako loves it. Yes, she does. Can you teach me some of those? Can you, can you teach me some of them kung fu moves you do, Chie? Uh, I study Wing Chun. That is my favorite because that is what Bruce Bruce Lee is. I say, it <clears throat> I want to learn the Chie kung fu. Well, you need to go to classes then. All right. True. Anyway, the last two questions. So, so Chie, you claim that you are a tomboy, but you seem more girly. What are you hiding from us? Uh, I don't remember claiming I'm a tomboy. Other people call me a tomboy. Girly me. I am a girl. So everything I do is girly because I'm a girl. That is the stupidest word ever invented. Uh, if you're a girl, automatically you're girly. If you're a boy, automatically you're a boy. I mean, that's a dumb word. 
zero. And I can kick your face off. And that's girly. Thank you. That's awesome. That's what it is. G.A. Satanaka, your last question. G.A. Satanaka, will you go out with me? Dude! We're friends! Sheesh! Ow. Awkward. Ow. That's hurtful. That's awkward. On camera, though? Not cool. At least I didn't do what, at least I'm not doing what Teddy's doing. True. Teddy is such a perv. I mean, he's also getting a fucking blimp and pulling up freaking signs asking all the girls out. Dude, creeper. I'll get you one day, Chie. I'll get you. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> and with that... We got, and with that, the <clears throat> the fun comes to an end. That, thank you, Aaron, for your cooperation. You're welcome. Everybody, make sure you check out her Twitter, her Discord, her Twitch, anything of her social media. Perfect. Any last words? Me. Indeed we do. Indeed we do. Anyway, Chie, thank you for everything. Thank you, Genocide Jack. Thank you, Noir. I'll find you. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just over here hiding behind the blankets. You're hiding behind the buckets and the blankets? Found you! Found you. But anyway, thank you for thank you for everything. And well, and with that, everybody, make sure you subscribe and everything. And I will see you then.